Hey guys, I'm working on some 6mm terrain for a customer order and I thought I'd take you along on how I'm doing all the rusting. And what we're looking at here is some 6mm buildings uh, from the Lazy Forger designs that I print and sell on my website and they're used for Adeptus Titanicus um, and uh, their own game, Full Spectrum Dominance. But we're going to look at how I've done uh, a lot of the rust work on here um, and how I did the detailing afterwards. And for those of you who don't have Dirty Down, which I'm going to use, we're going to look at also uh, a paints based version to get a similar effect, just not as grungy. Okay, so we're gonna approach this in two different ways. One, we're gonna use some Dirty Down, uh, but I recognize not, not everyone has access to Dirty Down or wants to use paints they already have, in which case uh, we're gonna use some miniature paints as well. If you're using miniature paints approach, I tend to prefer a, a metallic base coat, either a silver prime or a heavy dry brush over black. And for using the Dirty Down, the cheats way to do it is to actually start with a prime uh, in a mid-brown and then we're going to work in some texture um, and then some washes and for this we're going to do all of it with wash base work and then some metallics um, to catch the edges for the finish. So the Dirty Down works best over texture and these little pieces are heavily textured uh, because they're for a 6mm scale whereas the dish being so much larger doesn't have much texture. Now I tried to put some on uh, with the super glue and baking soda when I was actually adhering this to the base but I'm going to work a little bit more in here now and I'm going to use my old favourite Vallejo texture paste. Uh, the handy thing about the earth one is it already comes in a brown because you want a couple of different tones before you hit everything with the Dirty Down. We're going to be going for a very exaggerated look, um, even though at this scale the rust would be almost uh, invisible um, to, to, with grains. Um, you need to add a little bit of visual pop. This is to look good, not look realistic, though it can be halfway between the two. So I'm just going to stipple some of this on kind of where water would run and gather and I'll get it on some of the framework here. You don't have to be too tidy with this stuff because thankfully it's already brown um, so that hides a multitude of sins. So we'll just put this all over. Now even with a smaller piece here, we're still going to put in some colour variation because that's the key to have as a good undertone. So I've just got myself some skag brown or a nice orangey brown colour um, to offset with the medium brown here. And I'm just going to splotch this on again in a few spaces randomly. We don't want to have a pattern to this too much uh, because this isn't about running water and things like that. This is just about a bit of colour variation um, to make it look visually more interesting. So I'm just stabbing it in all over the place, getting some rough patches here and there. And then we'll do the same with some orange as well. And you'll notice I didn't wash my brush in between just so that the orange isn't too overpowering and you just get a bit of colour variation. What we'll do is let that dry now and then we'll move on to the dirty down stage because everything needs to be dried out. And here we are, the really fun part, we go with the Dirty Down. So this is a uh, pigment and dye based rust effect paint um, that has done the rounds on the internet recently. I've uh, been using this for quite a while now and it's, it's very, very reliable in terms of getting an awesome rusted look. So we're going to put this on that, shake the living hell out of this and then shake it some more. It's got an agitator in there but you've really got to shake it up. And then what we're going to do is slather it all over here. Right, your brush needs to be dry to damp. Do not use a wet, wet brush, otherwise you'll get uh, the separation effect right off the bat, and you kind of want to be able to control that in a bit, and I'll show you how. So what we're going to do now is go straight over with this. No neatness at all involved here. Just smoosh it all on and wait for the magic to happen. Now to really show off, we're going to slap some on this piece and do a little time lapse so you can see how it looks when it dries. So this looks pretty good, we've got some nice colour separation here and here and some dark patches that are just still drying but we need to fancy it up a little bit so what we're going to do is get some regular old water in a spray bottle and all we need to do is just spritz it roughly, definitely not evenly, you want some patches that are very wet, some patches that are still dry and we're going to go on like that and then we're going to see what difference that makes. I hope that wasn't too wobbly because I was blasting with the hair dryer to try and get it to dry quickly. But you can see it's still a little damp in places, but it's drying nicely and it's really split out into all of these mishmash of yellows and oranges and browns, particularly like on the dish, how it's gone very mottled. Obviously, it goes completely matte when it actually dries, uh, surprisingly matte. This bit down here I left particularly gnarly and black rusted, whereas this I gave more of a water spritz. And the more you do, the more it splits and then the building Again, it's come out very nicely and this is going to make the perfect basis for all of our metallics. 
So normally I would highly recommend that these little crevices where it's still a little wet if you're doing this at home, let those dry completely, maybe leave it for a couple of hours. Um, I'm in a rush to do this video, so I'm just gonna get on with this and it'll be absolutely fine. So I've got my dark metallic here, um, Vallejo Model Air, range ones are best. And what I'm gonna do is just very gently and sporadically over brush rather than dry brush and try and catch some of the edges in this dark silver. You want plenty of that rust still showing, but this will catch some of the details nicely and add a little bit of visual pop. Uh, feel free to leave patches without uh, any dry brushing on them so they look really gnarly and rusty, but uh, this is really just about adding contrast at this point to make it look worn, but also a little bit more interesting than just rusty, because otherwise it gets a bit much if it's just Right, and there we go, it gives a nice bit of visual interest. Got some really rusty areas, got some worn areas. What you can do is if you want these girders, for example, or pipes to look extra silvery, uh, you can just dry brush them so they look like they're made of a slightly different metallic alloy maybe uh, that hasn't rusted as much as the panels have. Um, particularly good if you can find a pipe, so there's some pipes here. So I might really heavily dry brush the pipes, suggesting they're made out of something a little bit more durable or weatherproof than the actual uh, corrugated sheeting and then it stands out again at a distance and what we can do now is get the silver and the key here is to just with the bright silver just nick some corners here and there and some edges you want to add a nice visual bright pop without making it look pristine and new Lost audio here, but I went through and added in a few of the details of the concrete, the barrels and the tyres using a very patchy and dry uh, base coat in order to add a bit of texture to it and some colour variation and just make things pop a little bit. Don't be neat and tidy here. Leaving some patchy bits really helps the look as you'll see next. By painting it with Scaracci maybe we call it or patchy stippling um, base coats. You've got some of these elements shown through where you've got some metallics here and you've got the dirty brown griminess on the concrete showing through. And we've already cheated once by using Dirty Down, so why not cheat again and use another bottle of liquid talent, null oil over those other elements. Uh, careful not to get it onto the rusty parts and uh, that's about done. Right, and as I said, we started with the metallic base for the non-dirty down method. I've got my same browns here, uh, orangey brown, uh, regular medium brown, and an orange. And I'll actually start with the mid of the two colours here. I'm just going to stab it on. Honestly, just be as rough and ready with this as you want to be, because we're going to tidy it all up in just a second. And then we go in with the medium brown in a few splotches. And then what we're going to want to do with the orange is actually wipe our brush off. So we try and get a little bit more orange uh, on this version because this is going to rely on this orange in the recesses here and there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work it really in there like that so it's going into the recesses. Just pushing with the brush. And there you've got a nice mottled -y colour. And what we're going to then do is get a bit of tissue. I'm just going to wipe the top surfaces like this to try and take it off the upper surfaces and then we'll let that dry. Right and on this piece our washes have dried and you can see where I sponged it or wiped it off with the cloth you've got a nice kind of metallic sheen still showing through. If you want that really gnarly rusty um, just wipe it a lot less and then what we're going to do now is just catch the edges with a dry brush to kind of make the worn areas pop um, but if you're doing it as really disused you wouldn't need to do this at all. Vallejo Model Air is my go-to for uh, metallics, and I like to start with the dark silver first. This is their gun metal, but they do a range of dark metallics. And then, again, just a simple dry brush, and all we're looking to do is just catch the edges where wear and tear may take place, just to A, look like it's worn a bit, and B, just to add a little bit of visual interest, because you need that pop when you're doing this on a whole board. And the teeniest bit of silver, because you really can go overboard with this stage, we just want to have a little couple of nicks here and there on a few edges, just to really jump out and add something that's a bit of a shine that catches your eye, and then that's it. It's very easy to accidentally dry brush the whole thing and it just looks clean and shiny. And here we go, if we hold the original metallic hook next to the rusted version, it's got a nice dry, rusty old look to it but it's clearly still seen some use and at a distance on the table it adds a little bit of visual pop rather than it being just silver with a wash or just weathering you want that little bit of wear just to add that little 
And with all those steps done, I'm very happy to call that finished. It's got nice variation in color. The rust effects look good. You could go to extra effort of picking out some of the details here, and I might do like this little bit of paper up here um, and one or two other tiny elements that are around. But generally speaking, a table is absolutely perfect for what you want for this size of terrain and uh, gives a great impression of what it is as a building. I batch paint these. I'm doing these for a customer order at the moment. Just put them on a board like this and hash out the various steps until you get to the uh, actual detail picking out stage and it goes very quickly you could get all, the, all this done in no time at all especially with the help of a handy hairdryer so i hope that's been useful and i hope this teaches some tips that people can use across their various projects and uh, get in touch in the comments below if there's anything else that you think you might need some uh, notes and help on